all students and seekers of general truths, we will um, answer three fairly simple questions here in this video, but then we will also extend them to concepts, to a major concept in calculus. So let's get right to it. A car travels at a constant velocity of 65 miles per hour for three hours. How far does it travel? So this is a question, you know, it's kind of like unit analysis, 65 miles for one hour multiplied by three hours. And that is going to give us 195 miles that this car travel. Okay. So, you know, that was simple enough. Uh, let's continue and go on. How far did it travel between 1.5 and 2.75 hours? So we want to know how much time elapsed. So we're calculating here the change in time. And the change in time is 2.75 minus 1.5, uh, which is 1.25 hours. And then we do the same thing that we did before. This tr car travels at 65 miles for one hour. We multiply it by the number of hours that it traveled for, 1.25 hours. And this gives us uh, 81.25. This gives us 81.25 miles that the car traveled between the time 1.5 and 2.75 hours. Okay. Now, so these are basic Algebra 1 questions, um, but let's look at the extension of this into the world of functions. So, give an algebraic and interpretation, and, and, and a geometry interpretation of your answers in number 1 and 2. So, one way that we can look at this is well, this is time and this is velocity. Okay, so this is like the time velocity graph, not the time position graph. Okay, I want to be clear, this is time and velocity. And this car is always traveling at 65 miles per hour. So basically the velocity graph looks like this. It's not very interesting at any moment in time. And so this car has basically got, uh, got cruise control between, you know, for as set to 65 miles per hour. And the time here measured in hours. And the velocity here measured in miles per hour. Well, what did we just do here when we did 65 times 3? Well, we took the height of this rectangle here, which has a height of 65, and the width of this rectangle here, which is a width of 3, or the length of this rectangle, and I realize I'm not really drawing this to scale. And so what we've done here is that we've calculated the area of this rectangle. Right? So this is the area of that rectangle. And that was for number one. Now for number two, what did we do? Well, we said for number two now, I'm going to do this in green. You know, at 2.75 hours and uh, between 1.5 and 2.75, so like on this interval, and this is in hours, this is the width of that rectangle, or the base of that rectangle, right? So this is 2.75 minus 1.5, and then the height here is 65. And so in number two, well, all we've really done here is calculate the area of this green triangle okay? to get the distance that the car traveled. So to recap, in number one, we are finding the area under V of t from uh, zero, from t equals zero to t equals 3. And in the second example, what we're doing here is kind of the same thing. The area under v of t from, but two different intervals, from t equals 1.5 to t equals 2.75. 
And so you see here, finding the area underneath a function, the velocity functions in particular, actually gives us distance traveled. So it's kind of weird. You calculate an area, may you get distance traveled. But it makes sense because the, the units here, the, the height of this function here, is a rate. And so we're multiplying it by uh, a scalar value. So that gives us another scalar value. So I'll end this video here, and then we'll extend this in, into a more complicated example in the next one, where maybe the graph of the velocity function isn't so nice and neat. So as always, keep working hard. Always ask for clarification when you need it. Thank you for watching, and have a